Hey everyone, so as you're probably aware, I've always had a soft spot in my heart for Dark Souls 2's PvP system. There was a magical period in my life in around 2015 where I was just absolutely going goblin mode on Dark Souls 2's PvP. And not to humble brag here, I was pretty good at one point. So recently I had a thought. Hey, is it even possible to get a PvP match in Dark Souls 2 in 2022? So I decided to hop online and the answer is, well, yeah, sort of. Here, watch a PvP master at work. I think just for those moves, if you do like this video and like what you're seeing, do hit the thumbs up button, it really does help the channel out. Also, if you're new here, subscribe and make sure to turn on post notifications as well. I'm posting a ton of Souls content and stream Souls as well. I'm not gonna lie, the situation is a lot better than I expected for Dark Souls 2's PvP. The matches you see here were recorded on a Saturday evening on PS5, a Scholar of the First Sin edition of course. I mean, considering how old this game is, it was actually not difficult to get matches. Now don't get me wrong, you'll still be doing a lot of this. And this. But overall I think we can declare that Dark Souls 2's PvP is still somewhat active. Now, the unfortunate thing is that the arenas are pretty much completely dead. I was able to get a match against one guy and that went about as well as you could expect. The arenas used to be the center of PvP action in this game, but now it seems like it's invasions or nothing. But the main topic I wanted to get to after this long-winded intro is why do I think Dark Souls 2's PvP is so good? Or more specifically, why do Dark Souls 2's core systems lead to a better PvP experience than other Souls games? Good question. There are several reasons. Number one, the stamina and action speed. People criticize the slow nature of Dark Souls 2's combat. While I think it's fine that this game is a little bit slower, I do understand the sentiment. However, the overall movement slash action style of this game works extremely well for PvP, because it does not allow you to overextend. The slower combat means no one can go in guns blazing, get like 6 or 7 R1s off and still have stamina to roll away safely. Dark Souls 2's systems simply do not allow this. You really do have to be very tactical in how you plan your attacks and make sure to watch your stamina. I've always felt like the PvP systems of subsequent From games allowed for way too many sloppy plays. You can get away with a lot in the latter games because unless you absolutely go insane and ridiculously overextend yourself, you will always have that pocket roll and always have enough stamina to get away. This is simply not possible in Dark Souls 2. The methodical nature of this game means PvP ends up being a lot more tactical. This leads on to point number two, which is the healing speed in this game. Since Bloodborne, I've always had issues with PvP in Souls games because they essentially made healing free. They are so incredibly fast and characters recover so quickly from the heal animation that PvP essentially becomes more about who runs out of flasks first. Dark Souls 3, I think, is the prime example of this, where both roll speed and healing are lightning quick. While these healing systems work in PvE, they are a bit more annoying online. Basically, you'll always be able to get a heal off in Dark Souls 3 and the chances of you being punished for it are extremely low. My view has always been that healing should be risky, whether we are talking about online or offline play. Dark Souls 2's healing system is perfect for this. I never felt annoyed if my opponent got off an Estus Flask during an invasion because it always felt like I was the one making a mistake. I gave him too much room, he outplayed me, his movement was better, etc. Now, listen, I'm not nostalgia blind here. 
I know Dark Souls 2 had its own set of issues. Radiant life gems are an especial problem. Life gems in general, because you can get 99 of each and essentially spam them endlessly. But in most situations, duels were a lot less focused on Estus slash heal spamming. And of course, I do have to talk about the build and weapon variety in this game. Dark Souls 2 just has an insane number of viable builds and weapons for PvP. Now, this is Souls. We all know that offline anything is possible. Any weapon can be used to clear the whole game. <laughs> Your boy is currently doing a mundane ladle only challenge run by the way. Next stream is happening tomorrow, so do hit the notifs to stay up to date on that. But even online, a ton of stuff was viable. I've ran dual poison whips in this game. I've done magic only and got wins with a catalyst in one hand and a pyro glove in the other. I've used the fume ultra great sword. That's why I ran with that weapon for a while on my first DS3 run. One of my favorites was a dragon slayer spear slash faith build. I was absolutely wrecking with that. It felt like if you were good enough, you could get wins with almost any weapon and build combo. Not to mention, I've always held the opinion that Dark Souls 2 has really good fashion souls. The amount of equipment that matches with each other is just staggering, allowing for like really creative and decent looking fashion souls. And of course, plenty of troll outfits. Now again, not to go down the nostalgia blindness route, there was a ton of cheap shit in this game. We all remember the Smelter, Havel, Gower's Ring builds of this game. Essentially, that was this game's version of Giant Dead. There was Ice Rapier, that weapon was a huge menace for a while. And, of course, the Painting Guardian sword was straight up busted for a long while. But overall, so many things were possible, and with the added bonus of this game allowing for a ton of respecking via soul vessels, and also having easy to access upgrade materials, PvP was extremely varied, and one single character with soul vessels and upgrade materials will allow you to play with a variety of different builds. Now, you might have noticed from the clips that I'm showing here that I ain't exactly the PvP master I once was. Yep, I've taken a lot of L's today, but after playing and playing I finally arrived at an absolutely glorious victory. Yeah, 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 okay, that was not the most elegant win there. Let's take a look at an actual match. So yeah, it's time for a rematch. This is the guy that I summoned as a dragon spirit, which I gotta give him some credit. He must be the last dragon invader left in this entire game. At least, I think it's the same guy. He is using the red rust to emblade, which used to be also pretty broken. Uh, it has been nerfed. So, anyways... What I've realized while playing, and I probably should have realized this earlier, is that PvP in this game is all about being not locked on. The movement system in this game is really weird when you're locked on, and it can get you in a lot of trouble. Uh, plus, actions don't tend to track very well. Anyways, stun locked with the Twin Blade, I'm just trying to get some hits in. Of course, the thing is, everybody is super over, over leveled in this game at this point, so there's something you have to just sort of deal with. Bit of a phantom range. Yeah, I mean, one thing, I never said the online connections in this game were good. That is something that has been way improved. Even though, you know, from some of the games are not multiplayer games. Still, we're just jumping around each other. So this is what I'm talking about when I talk about stamina management, how important it is. I overextended there and I was barely able to get away. He is using a good shield though. I think that's the King's Great Shield or King's Shield. It's a Vendrix thing. He has pretty good defenses. Nobody gets hit by that, I swear. I've used it so many times and I realized I'm an idiot because I'm constantly cancelling the buff on my weapon. Oh well. No one said I was playing smart here. 
There you go. He's going for the spell. What are you doing? As in, what am I doing? Run in. And of course, the glorious Katana R1 running attack secures the victory. Man, I miss Dark Souls 2 PvP. I definitely will try to jump back occasionally to play some matches, just for nostalgia's sake. It was really fun doing this and reminisce a bit about the height of this game's popularity because PvP was insane in this game. I don't know if I'll ever spend this much time in PvP in any other From game. To be honest, Elden Ring does seem to be going in the right direction. I do like the new change they recently implemented where invaders and players are scaled closer together, not allowing for massive power discrepancies. Dark Souls 2 tried fixing that with soul memory and it just ended up being a complete disaster. If they actually implement the arena in Elden Ring one of these days, uh, hopefully that will happen, where matches can be played without healing and everything will be scaled together, I'll definitely give it a shot. But to wrap up, Dark Souls 2's PvP is awesome. If you have the game, try to jump online every once in a while. Let's keep this game alive as long as possible. We can all take a little bit of inspiration from Demon's Souls that was kept alive for like over a decade, I think, which is absolutely crazy. And to that end, let's take a look at another W. Thanks for watching and peace out.